So what's, what's the underlying rationale for this physiologically? So this has been the dogma that has driven our concepts of lipoprotein metabolism for the last 30 years. So we basically start with a, a nutrient source, rich in fat, um, in our culture perhaps a Twinkie, and our goal is to get the calories that are in this nutrient to your adipose tissue. So initially, we take up the fats into our intestines, and those fats are absorbed. But we don't transport them directly to adipose tissue. Instead, we send those fats to the liver via these very large particles that contain a lot of triglyceride called chylomicrons. The particles are disassembled in the liver and reassembled into VLDL and LDL that are secreted by the liver, and those particles actually transport the nutrient-rich triglycerides to the adipose tissue. So one of the paradoxes of this is that these particles are very rich in cholesterol, which as I've told you is a key player in maintaining the integrity of your membranes so that they don't leak water. But the problem with cholesterol, the yin and the yang of cholesterol, is that it also can promote inflammation in a kind of a white blood cell that exists in your body called a macrophage. So macrophages are white blood cells that play a very important role in fighting infection. And when they acquire too much cholesterol, they become angry and they do bad things. An example of that is a, an atherosclerotic lesion. So this is what kills most people in the United States. About 40 to 50 percent of people in the United States die from coronary artery disease. And the underlying problem is accumulation of cholesterol in the arteries that supply blood to your heart. An example of this is shown in this picture right here. This is a atherosclerotic lesion, very lipid rich, rich in cholesterol, that's ruptured and triggered the formation of a clot in the artery killing the patient. So this is what causes a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. So this is illustrating kind of our current concept for how macrophages, which are a very key component of the atherosclerotic lesions, these, these white blood cells, get into the artery wall and accumulate cholesterol. So the initial event is thought to be the bad form of cholesterol, or LDL, getting into the artery wall. And we actually still don't understand exactly how this takes place. Subsequently, again by poorly understood pathways that may involve oxidative stress, the cholesterol triggers the secretion of inflammatory hormones and signaling molecules that lure monocytes, the precursors of macrophages, into the artery wall. So these are inflammatory white blood cells that normally would fight infection, but in the setting of too much cholesterol in the artery wall, they sense that inflammation is going on and they enter that environment. And there they take up too much cholesterol to become cholesterol-laden foam cells that are the key cellular player in atherosclerosis. Okay, so how do LDL and HDL work in this scenario? So the traditional idea is that LDL is very rich in cholesterol and that it binds to scavenger receptors on the cell surface of the macrophage. These are receptors that were originally developed to fight invading pathogens, but because LDL has become modified, it now is recognized by these receptors and delivers cholesterol in an unregulated manner to the cell. And this is, produces what we call a foam cell. This is a macrophage that's become cholesterol ester loaded. And these are angry macrophages. They're not happy. They produce inflammatory mediators and they do lots of bad things. In contrast, HDL traditionally is thought to remove this excess cholesterol. And so the idea would be that HDL counteracts the bad effects of LDL by removing cholesterol from the macrophages. So, so the idea is, I think, and this is a very important idea, is that it's not really LDL itself that's necessarily bad for you. It's a modified form of LDL that can bind to these receptors on macrophages that normally recognize invading pathogens. And I think one of the themes of the story that I'd like to tell you tonight is that we think that HDL is also playing a role in these infectious pathways. So the notion is that LDL is modified and that causes disease. So one very attractive hypothesis that's supported by many different lines of evidence is that this modification reaction that occurs to LDL occurs via a pathway we call oxidative stress. And I'll, I'll give you an example of how this might work in just a minute. But the notion is 
Initially, LDL gets into the artery wall and then somehow mysteriously becomes oxidized. And it's this oxidized form of LDL that actually lures the monocytes into the artery wall to become macrophages. In concert with that, oxidized LDL can also bind to the cell surface of these macrophages and be taken up, producing cholesterol-loaded macrophages. And it's these foam cells that are actually the critically important link in promoting inflammation in the artery wall and lesion formation and plaque rupture. So one pathway that white blood cells like macrophages use to generate reactive intermediates involves an enzyme called myeloperoxidase, or MPO. And I've colored it green here because this is a beautiful green protein. The first time that I purified this, there was an intense green column of the protein bound to the uh, column that I was using for the isolation procedure. And as soon as I saw this protein, I, know, I knew I wanted to work on it. It's an incredibly beautiful protein. So normally, the myeloperoxidase resides in granules inside macrophages and other white blood cells. But when the cells become activated, for example, by sensing a bacterial or fungal pathogen in their environment, this triggers activation of the cells. And, and two things happen. First, the cells use a membrane-associated enzyme system to generate hydrogen peroxide, a relatively weak oxidant. The cells also secrete myeloperoxidase. And the myeloperoxidase interacts with the hydrogen peroxide to generate an oxidant called hypochlorous acid. And probably this is more familiar to people in the room as bleach. So we use bleach, for example, to sterilize pools or our water supply. And what we're basically doing is recapitulating an enzyme pathway that was developed hundreds of millions of years ago by white blood cells to kill invading pathogens. So your white blood cells make bleach. So the normal role of this pathway is to kill bacteria and fungus. And we've been able to use mice that lack myeloperoxidase to demonstrate this. But what we proposed when I originally moved to Washington University was that bleach could also be a way to damage host tissue at signs of chronic or acute inflammation. So we originally became interested in the idea then that bleach generation by myeloperoxidase might be a mechanism for the macrophages to damage LDL and promote foam cell formation. So to first test this idea, we did a very simple experiment. What we're looking at here is human atherosclerotic lesions that have been stained with antibodies that recognize specific things. And the staining is demonstrated by the intense red color that you see. So on the left panel, we're looking at a region of the, of the lesion that's uh, very rich in macrophages. And on the right side of the panel, we're actually looking at something we call the necrotic core that doesn't have many cells in it, but is very rich in cholesterol. In the upper panel, you're, uh, we're using an antibody that recognizes oxidized LDL. So notice that it stains the macrophages, and it has a very distinct immunostaining pattern in the advanced acellular lesions on the right side as well. In the bottom panel, we've used an antibody that recognizes myeloperoxidase to stain the lesions, and these are serial sections in the same lesions. And what you can see is a very strikingly similar pattern of staining. Most of the MPO is associated with macrophages in the macrophage-rich part of the lesion, and most of it is around these cholesterol clusters, or crystals as we call them, in the acellular necrotic core. So based on these and other observations, we proposed that myeloperoxidase might be one mechanism for oxidizing LDL in the human artery wall.